Hi guys, I'm Matt, a landscape architect from Melbourne, Australia. Today I want to share with you a simple process to help you come up with your own professional garden design. I call it the 7 step design guide. It will help you organise and clarify your different ideas to put them together in a way that is unique to your backyard. It should help if you're new to design and unsure where to start you know what you want, but you don't know how to put it together, or you have a rough plan and want to explore a few more options. The end goal is to create some rough plans to either refine further, do it yourself build, or take to an expert. This video is an overview of the 7 step design guide, so let's jump right in. Step 1. Collect ideas and inspiration. The first step is to start to collect different pieces of inspiration. These can be images, videos or real life examples. And you want to collect them for the different areas of your garden, different ideas that you want to test out, or the different activities you want to do in your garden. So file or print off these images of the things that you like. You can like the whole image, such as I do for this backyard here, or maybe just one element of the garden or different idea. If you don't know what you like, try googling garden styles or head over to landscapingnetwork.com. It has a really good overview of some different design styles and lots of images. Have a look through and eliminate any styles that you don't like and look further into the styles that you do. Step 2. Define what you want. Write down in bullet point form what you like about each image. It can be the material combinations, the colours, the shapes, maybe the layout, or perhaps the overall theatre or effects that the garden creates. If you have multiple photos for one area or activity, such as entertaining, you can take a few points from each. And if you have competing ideas, for a particular area or activity, try them both out. This list of points will become your criteria. They define what you want that area to look like, which will in turn indicate how you want to use the area. Step number three, site analysis. Site analysis really covers two aspects. The first is site conditions, where you look at the slope of your site, the soil, and any existing features on your site. The second is local environment, such as your local climate or any nearby structures from neighbouring properties that may have an influence on your site. The more you understand about your site, the better your design will be. The first thing you want to look at is the high and low points of your site, because that will influence where water runs and where it collects and pools. You also want to know the average yearly rainfall because that will influence how much water you can expect and where that water will run to. You also want to know average wind strength and direction. Often that will change throughout the year and that can have an impact on where you place particularly tall items, whether it's near a house or near some other area. You also want to know soil conditions, such as if it's loam, sandy or clay, and the pH level of the soil. Even if you don't exactly understand what to do with this information, you can take it to someone who does. Another area you want to look at is council restrictions, which are things like easements, stormwater drains, or sewerage lines, access, things like that. Knowing this stuff is really important because council restrictions will limit where you can build objects. The final bit of site analysis you want to know is where shadows fall during the day and throughout the year. This may seem tricky to figure out, but all you need is a rough estimate. You want to notice how it changes from season to season and ensure that you don't put an area you want to use in summer in a shady spot, for example. Site analysis allows you to determine where you can place different ideas on your site. Step 4. A scaled base plan. You can see here I've got a base plan of the backyard of a property. All we include is the property boundary as well as the back area of the house. You want to make sure you include door and window positions of your house, 
You also want to make it a really simple scale, something that's easy to follow. And you want to make sure it's as blank and empty as possible. Only keep existing items if you are 100% sure you must. If you're not sure, get rid of it. Just remember, it's only a drawing. You can always put things back in at a later stage. Step number five, pick one area and start sketching. Let's look at an example, such as your entertaining space or area. You determine where you want it by referring to your site analysis. You fill that space with your criteria and you let it be shaped by that position. You have four criteria for this area. A timber deck, something that's partially covered, and you want no handrail around the edges. The deck has to go straight from the deck to the ground or down a few steps if it's needed. It also needs to be big enough for a table, some chairs, and perhaps a barbecue bench. So let's have a look at the site and see what positions we can rule out. Your shadows will fall here on a summer afternoon. That's the time of year you will use it mostly, and so you don't want to build in these particular areas. A slope, or slopes, are in these areas of the site, and they require protection if you build deck on them. You will have to use a hand roll around the edges, so you don't want to build there. Strong winds can come here from the north during summer, and that would obviously be a bad place to build. Water falls to the lowest points at the top and at the bottom edge of the site, so you don't want to build here, or if you do, you need to make sure that you account for that. That does leave a few positions that you can test and explore. Choose one. Explore how that position can influence the shape of the area or idea that you're testing. Remember your criteria and try to fit it all into that space. Each spot should influence the shape of your idea a little bit differently. Step number six, add other areas around it. The following sketches merely outline what possible positions certain activities or ideas can go. Your sketches should be much quicker and a lot rougher. So, you have your first area that you explored in step five. Choose another one and add it in. Add a third. Keep adding areas around it. And remember your site analysis to help inform where an area can go. Each area will influence the other areas around it, changing and refining their shape and layout. Don't be afraid to do quick and rough sketches. The more sketching you do, the more ideas you generate. After this sketching, you will have your first scaled plan. But you're not quite finished. Step number seven, repeat. Repeat the process, placing different ideas or areas into different positions around the backyard. These are some sketches I quickly drew showing different explorations of ideas and switching things in different positions. If you want to understand how different heights will work, draw a section. And this is a more polished final plan with annotations describing different features. You really want to let your site dictate why things go in certain positions. Let the ground, climate and nearby areas influence how they're shaped. Also consider when you will be using these areas throughout the year and how. Do this multiple times and you'll have some really solid draft plans to either refine further, start your own do-it-yourself build or take to an expert for more help or for a rough quote. Regardless of where you go, you'll have a plan. 
So, in summary, the seven step design guide. Collect ideas and inspiration. Define what you want. Conduct site analysis. Make a scaled base plan. Pick one area and start sketching. Add other areas around it. And repeat the process. There we go guys, a quick overview of my 7 step design guide. If you have any more questions feel free to let me know and if you want some more information head over to my website at howtogardendesign.com. The following videos will take a more in-depth look at each step to help you out and make sure you're on the right track. Thanks for watching.